Welcome back. Let's just go into more of, more about overactive bladder. My doctor in Ottawa recommended I went to see a pelvic floor physiotherapist. There was a clinic in Ottawa that he normally sent his patients to. It's not just for women, it's for men and, to, men and women of any age. It's just a pelvic floor physiotherapy clinic. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't covered by OHIP, so Ontario uh, Health Insurance Plan. Anyways, it wasn't covered by the healthcare system in Ontario and Canada. If I had a, a secondary insurance, at the time, I probably would have been able to submit like receipts. It was pretty expensive, but I did try to go. I'm pretty sure I went once a week, once every two weeks. So I had a pelvic floor physiotherapist and she would give me a lot of instructions on what she had known to help make bladders stronger and Kegel muscles stronger and everything. So what I wanna do is uh, I wanna go over some of the tips that she had taught me in order to uh, alleviate some of the symptoms. So the first thing I wanted to talk about his breathing. <laughs> so uh, the reason that's important is because the bladder can be really stressed out if you are holding all your tension in your stomach and your gut. And um, it'll stress out and then int tense up the bladder. I get to the office with her and then we kind of just start with uh, how does my breathing look from a standing situ position and then a sitting position. So she would want to see if I'm holding in my gut or if I'm if I'm just tense in the shoulders and in the, the gut region. So she said, the best thing to do is to start breathing from your diaphragm, which means not through your chest, from your stomach, and to let that, and let your gut relax. And that's not something I, I've never done that. <laughs> not until I started talking to my uh, physiotherapist. So she said to let your gut relax and to breathe freely without cons like restricting yourself from breathing. And the b best way to practice that is to put your hand on your stomach and like let it rise and fall and also to try doing it lying down. Now obviously you're never gonna be lying down constantly and a lot of people suck in their gut to feel like they look thinner, but it doesn't add that much of a difference. See, like when I do it, I feel immediately better. Like I feel like, man, I can breathe and I feel air going into my lungs fully and it's just generally a good feeling. So practice doing it. If you don't do it all day, every day, no one's gonna blame you, but that's just kind of what we wanna try and do to uh, put less stress on your bladder. Your ribs and your stomach will move while you breathe, so that's the best way to just kind of let it all out. And then when you start breathing through your chest, you'll realize that you suck your stomach in, and then your chest is now inflated more than your stomach is. So a healthy way to breathe is start breathing through the diaphragm. Another uh, suggestion that I think I've been t I've been told this before um, by different physiotherapists and whatnot. So this one is in regards to just purely standing. So when you're standing, um, this may not be a problem for everyone, but I noticed that when I went there, she always, again, one of the things she would check and see is how I was standing. So when you're standing, you want your knees not to be locked in a position. So if your knees are, are not locked, then you're giving you into a freer, a little bit less stressful stance. When your knees become locked, you're not giving into any kind of free movement and less and putting less stress on your back and your shoulders. Let your knees unlock and then stand with them shoulder width apart and then on two feet and then relaxing. So everything's in blocks, right? So your head, your shoulders, your knees and your toes, no. Your head, your shoulders, your stomach, and then your knees, you all kind of want them to be kind of loose. It's going to put stress on your bladder. They're tensed up. I'm going to put a picture up on how an overactive bladder looks next to a normal bladder. The difference is more that the overactive bladder is just under constant stress. And then it, when it's stressed, it contracts faster or more quickly. And it feels more stressed out. Anyways. So another thing I do a lot is <laughs> um, you want your rib cage to face down. So that doesn't mean hunch over. Um, but a lot of the time I find I'm straight sitting up with my chest out and then um, my head up straight, but just to relax. In these descriptions, since I am not a physiotherapist, I'm not a doctor, I don't feel like I have a right to tell anyone what to do or how to do it. So these are just guidelines on general posture and uh, breathing techniques that can just generally keep you feeling less stress in different parts of your body. I'm really just talking about um, taking away the stress from your bladder. So anyway, try practicing without bracing. So for me, my thing was bracing my knees and then bracing, uh, sucking in my gut and just being a stiff board all day. It was just was not very good. So there might be, that might attribute to part of the symptoms I have with the overactive bladder. 
but I have been working on these for over a year. It's an, it's an issue for, with me. My issue is that the bladder sending signals to my brain that it needs to release, but still uh, a nerve issue. So I really don't want to get into that too much, but again, this does help me feel less stress in my shoulders and in my gut when I do these things. So um, that's just a disclaimer. I'm really not trying to tell anyone how to live their life, but if you feel these things helped you, then good. Uh, so the next tip I wanted to give you was, I kind of, I think this one was a really good one for me. Um, it was the idea of being calm. One of the other things that would happen when I walked into my uh, physiotherapist's office would be that she'd ask me to lie down and then she would just kind of like roll her hand along my stomach muscles. It would give the muscles something to, a reason to relax in my stomach. There can be tiny knots in your uh, stomach muscles. So she just kind of rolled her uh, back of her hand along my stomach and just kind of pushed along very slowly, just kind of kneading out the knots, if you will. And then that kind of just relaxes your stomach and kind of like resets it, if you will. <laughs> so the other, the thing I was telling you that I thought worked the best was not to think about the word pee. So even if you have the sensation of your bladder is going to overreact and stuff, and you're thinking about the word, you're like, oh my gosh, I have to pee. Oh my gosh, I really have to pee. And you just, as soon as you're sending that signal to your brain, not only are you thinking and saying it, your brain's like, well, you since you said it and you're thinking it, then it probably is true and you might pee. So, so once the bladder starts sending signals to the brain saying pee, 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 then um, you've the bladder muscles are hyper and then they kind of want to start contracting. And then when they start contracting, then you're not, and you're not on the toilet yet, then you've got a problem. <laughs> so, um, but the, one of the things she, t my favorite physiotherapist told me was that once the bladder has sent the signals away to the brain to pee, and become urgent and more uh, under stress. It's hard, it's, it's really hard, and I, I think she almost said it's, it's, it's almost, or it's essentially impossible to bring that back down. So once the, once the bladder's hyper, it doesn't come back from hyper unless you've urinated. One of the things we were talking, we discussed was distraction methods and, and calmly breathing on the way to the bathroom or the toilet. So if you are urgent walking the, on your way to the bathroom, um, that what I would say is don't, okay, so don't contract, don't contract your stomach muscles, and but do contract your pelvic floor muscles only. So which would be Kegel exercises in women. But to do that would be a good idea, but also relaxed rib cage breathing. So that would mean breathing from your diaphragm and from your gut, breathing calmly, as well as calmly thinking of a distraction on the way. So all that sounds easier than said than done, of course, I, believe, I, I know it to be, but uh, as time goes on and you kind of start to attribute those to your daily life, sometimes you can start doing those things at home. Like you don't have to, I, I think that's kind of how I was easy, best for me to do it. When I'm at home throughout the day, it's not likely that I'm going to find myself running to the bathroom anyway, so it's a good time to start trying to do these sort of exercises. Because when, if you're at home alone and you don't have anywhere to go, or if you're if you're not at work, then you're more than like you're more than likely to think about the things that I th well at least for me it was easier for me to think about the things that I needed to do. It just kind of sort of started flowing into the my re regular day life. So yeah, as long as you're trying not to think about the word P, I think that's like probably the number one thing. And to, for me, I found it the be, to be the best because these, I've been doing a lot of these uh, exercises and stuff. It's definitely helped a little bit. Like it's helped in the fact that I'm relaxed and I, but I let the urge sensation come and go. Cause that's the best way for me to let go if I don't, if I'm not in your bathroom or I'm not able to get to one immediately. It's been very helpful and I really, do appreciate going to see this pelvic floor physiotherapist for as long as I did because she really did like again teach me so much about how everything is just connected. <laughs> and then the other things we sort of just talked about every week would be decreasing the amount you drink before bed. Well, especially for me because we we're we were, I wet the bed still, but um, and also setting alarm clock reminders on your phone to go um, at least two hours before bed, and then um, and throughout the day would be to try and go every hour for from around nine to five or 10 to six or whenever your day sort of starts and goes for about eight hours. So try to train your body to start going. And then the urgency can follow a better path so that it's, it's kind of used to taking turns and going to the bathroom. Part of the avoiding thing was to go uh, every hour and then every week to increase it by 10 minutes and then 10 minutes. So we were going at one point 
from one hour to an hour and a half to two every two hours and it's slowly just it sounds silly but it's kind of just training your bladder to just follow that method um, so that it's, it's less likely to overact but it may not work but I'm just saying it is a good thing to practice um, and the other thing was this one I found a little bit difficult depending on the day but was to sit on the toilet for at least five seconds before urinating and letting all your bladder or letting your bladder release another thing was just not to push on your bladder just to let it release by on its own and feel relaxed and not stressed in the stomach that one i found a little challenging with waiting five seconds but since then it's been a lot easier to do <laughs> so obviously these things aren't going to be easy to start off with because we're not used to them but it's i thought they really worked really well for me in the sense of urgency and the frequency thing so it's not going to cure your overactive bladder but it will help alleviate some of your symptoms i think i mean that's how it worked for me it's really about it um i'm going to send a put a bunch of links down below about where i found this information and um well at least the information i got was from my pelvic floor physiotherapist like i said but like it was just more generalized towards me oh yeah and another thing was um there's going to be a link below for uh avoiding diary and Say your doctor asks you to fill out one of these, or you want to fill one out before you go to see your doctor or your urologist or whomever you see. Um, I'm going to link that below because I found that really helpful. Um, when it asks you to fill in the milliliter section, um, you may have to purchase a voiding cup thing for your gender and then to urinate in that before you go to the bathroom because you can't really catch it in the toilet. So the idea is to urinate in the bottle that measures everything and then to um, mark it down and then pour it into the toilet so that can be a little challenging again try to do that throughout the day and then once you kind of get used to what feel like you would be like that's 200 milliliters that's 400 milliliters that's 350 or 500 or whatever you start getting used to um, then you'll probably be able to guesstimate easier throughout the day like if that was a large amount if that was a little amount and then you fill in the frequency and then the uh, urgency as well so I really liked that, that really helped me. I've done it quite a few times um, for different doctors and such. So you can always keep that. It's um, I started putting it on my phone because I couldn't carry this piece of paper around with me all day. So uh, I just filled in the on a notepad or on a Word document on my phone to just say this is um, when I went to the bathroom. So timing is always good to just remember the time, the urgency, and then the... Uh, amount that you urinated is always a good thing to remember. So yeah, I would definitely recommend doing that. Um, you can download the PDF or fill one out yourself or look up them on Google. It's free. I don't know. Anyways, um, I'd recommend doing that. It's pretty cool. Um, gives you good insight to what you're doing. And then also recommends to like write down what you're drinking and stuff throughout the day. So anyways, that's my spiel. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up because that, I appreciate it. Um, and uh, yeah, keep the comments coming your my way so I can figure out what else to film. Um, I've got lots of ideas. I still want to talk about other things. I'm going next week to see my doctor in Toronto and uh, I think not, it's just a checkup. It's, it shouldn't be too exciting so we'll see how that goes. But yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye!